Are we doing it? Yeah, here we go. All right. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, hello, my dear loyal specs. This is a weird stream because it's not a stream I would normally do, but I said I was going to do an art stream yesterday. I didn't get to do it because I ended up doing errands and junk in the morning. But, hello, friends. Uh, I was asked by my dearest and most beautiful girlfriend, Tori, to fix the stuffed animal belonging to her best friend because it seems to have started to come apart in several places. So, we're gonna go ahead and do that. This is straight up Rosen Maiden at this point. So I'm just sort of like picking across it and finding where things need to be fixed. What things can be taken off and that kind of thing. Hello, Francine. Good to see you. Wowzers. Yeah, this whole arm needs to just be reattached. Like, you can see it's kind of just come completely apart. So we're just going to go ahead and reattach that arm top down. And the leg. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be reatta reattached the left arm and left leg properly. Ears seem to be okay. So, let's get started then, shall we? I've got a sort of creamy colored thread that's kind of about the same. How's it going, Dave? So all we're going to do is we're just going to take like a length of this, this thread. And we're going to thread a needle through it. We're going to use double thickness on it because that's better for most things. But in specific for this bit, it's good for... Uh, uh, repairs for stuffies and that kind of junk. There we go. Let's get us this needle going on here. This needle had some red thread on it, but we don't need that jazz. Key! <coughs> ah. There we go. Where is everyone? Well, Dave, it's like noon on a Monday, so I don't blame people for not coming through. <laughs> Also, this whole stream is just me fixing a stuffed animal. So, I mean, I don't know how wide of an audience that's going to have. Thanks, Dave. But I have to do it, so I may as well have streamed it. It's like a weird, uh... A, a weird, like, thing that has happened to life now is, if you're going to do a thing, you may as well stream it. Because people will probably watch. Hmm. Alright, let's start. God, this thing is so full of hair and junk as well. Let's start with the leg. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just, like, use a, uh, sort of repairing stitch to try to reattach everything here. This needle might be too thick for this material. But I don't have a better one right now. So the way that this stitch works is you've got these two things that are coming this way, right? So if this is the, the, two, the, the two things that are there, you're going to pop in through this one, move over a little bit, pop up through the side of it, and catch the side of the second one. Pop up through it and catch the side of the second one. So you're basically making a zipper the whole way down. It's a good way to make, like, an invisible repair. It is slightly difficult to pull off when you are working with weird angles like there are in stuffies. But, you know. If everything were easy, then what would the point be? I am glad that you are also a, a needlesmith, Francine. It is good to find others who have the same skill set and with whom we can have good conversation. Yeah, this thing, it seems that the legs and such were attached with twine rather than thread, which is kinda lame. Because what it means is that it makes things more difficult to 
repair in the same ways that it was done before. But, again, not impossible. Have you, are you actually going to make, like, a lucky stuffy? That would be fantastic, Francine. It's a good time. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I know this is a weird and random, like, stream topic, so for you who are joining me, thank you very much. I appreciate it. This is not going to be my normal. I do not often sit and just do stuffy repairs for people. Gosh, this thing is so old, too. Tori was telling me, like, you have to be really careful with this thing. It's really important to her. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I got you. It seems like it's full of cat hair, which is why my allergies are screwing with me right now. <coughs> Sorry. Alright. So let's take a look where we were here. We're gonna pop you through this side of where the twine is. Because I don't want to pull out any of the twine. Uh, because it might be connected further up inside and not just be an individual piece of, of connective tissue, as it were. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh yeah, straight up Rosen maidening this bitch. Oh, I said bitch, is that going to get me demonetized today? Oh, the twine isn't the original. The twine is, is someone has repaired this thing before. Oh. Well, if that's the case, then we're going to take that bit out and put the leg to where it's actually supposed to be. Yeah, because I was following where the twine lines were, but the twine lines are crooked. And that's not going to help at all. Jazzy's home. Hi, Jazzy. I'm fixing, uh, Jess, not Jess, the other one. Tori's friend, Stuffy. Ashley? Ashley. I'm fixing Ashley's Stuffy. Uh, someone had originally done some repairs on it, and it was garbage. Mm. So I'm going through and fixing those. And also the places that need repairing again still. Mm. Yeah. Hola, friends! Jazzy's here. Hi, Jazzy. Everybody say hi. I'm not on the screen. I'd have to, like, jump over to her. <laughs> See if I can jump over and say hello. There is a Jazzy hand. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Francine. Francine's pretty cool. A lot of people are pretty cool. All right. So, here's how the leg is supposed to be attached. Uh-huh. And it was attached way like that. Who did that? I don't know who did it, but whoever did it did not do it straight. So we're going to put it back the way that it's supposed to be. Oh, that's nice of you. <laughs> Jazzy jazz hands. Definitely not the yeah. first time that I've heard that. Austin says I have constant jazz hands. <laughs> Permanent jazz hands, that's it. All right, we'll get rid of this twine business. Pull ah. this guy back open. There we go. This guy sits up further like that. That's where it's supposed there to be. Go. This couch was a good score. Yes, the couch that we are sitting on today was free. It was out on the curb, so we took it and brushed it off and covered it with sheets and things, and now it's awesome. Yeah, it's kind of great. Much better than the wicker couch that we were sitting on before. Ah. Wicker couch, nothing wrong with the wicker couch. It just is not comfortable to, like, sit on for long periods or try to sleep on. Yeah, it's definitely an outdoor hangout for a little bit and then move around and do something. Right. Put that thing next to, like, a barbecue or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're hucking, we're hucking this dude's hip back up further onto his body. 
Yes, bring Ed along. He will be a good addition to the stream. Uh, Jazzy has a stuffy as well, named uh, Ed the Octopus. You are correct, Lol Bomb Gamer Pants, because this is a weird stream at a weird time. So I do not blame people for not kind of showing up. Mostly on the grounds that it is not often that someone will take time out of their day to come and watch someone repair a, a stuffed animal for someone. It's an odd stream topic, but I'm doing it. There we go. Oh, thank you, Lil Bum. I appreciate it. Um, when the time comes and I actually have my new computer, I have all the pieces for the new computer, and they're all nice and set up and put together. I just have to troubleshoot it into working again. Or, I suppose, working at all. Um, as soon as that is finished and ready, I'll be able to, like, actually start putting back together the videos that I used to be able to make for you guys. And those are way better. Because at present, I don't have any, any editing software that's worth anything. <sighs> yeah, no, this, this stuffed animal is so full of cat hair that it is really screwing with my allergies. It's pretty good. Ah, yes. Ed the Octopus. A, uh, a friend of the show will go. He's gonna hang out with us for a bit. He has his own Instagram, doesn't he? Yes, he does. What's his thing? He is at Ed the Octo. Ed on. the Octo. He's got a pretty cool lifestyle going on. Pretty active. He's very angry at everything. Goes to places, is grumpy at stuff. Oh, yeah. You should show them his face a little better. Ed the Angry Octo. He's very tsundere. <laughs> <laughs> It's not like I like you or anything. Oh no. So we're gonna have him just kinda chill out over here for a bit. There you go. <laughs> He's judging you on your sewing. Yeah, well, he doesn't have the fine motor skills required to yeah. actually sew. So sit and judge all you like, Ed, but I'd like to see you do a better job. <laughs> Baka! Skidiya <laughs> is easily one of the most adorable things that exists. You've also got uh, the professor. Yeah, but I think he would be way too big in this setting right now. Yeah, the professor is is a uh, less intimate type. He, he's ginormous and wonderful. We will bring him along uh, for another time. He can be featured on a different thing. <laughs> With our special guest, the professor! What are you a professor of? Uh, <laughs> being awesome as a stuffed animal. <laughs> Has a master's degree in that shit. Yep. A PhD even. Hoo hoo. Come on. Catch on the inside of that fabric. There we go. That's the problem with sewing on stuff that has a pile, is you'll often just like catch in the fuzz bits, and this doesn't hold nope. at all. eventually mm -mm. come out of that. Oh yeah. Easily so. And All right. then it will fall down and be sad. Mm -hmm. It is close. Close enough, I think. Better looking than it was. Yeah, most certainly better than it was. Mm -mm -mm. Alright, we're just gonna throw a finishing stitch onto this thing here. Try to catch as little of the fuzz as possible. Just gonna sweep through that twice, pull it nice and tight all the way through, and then we'll pull that entire knot all the way through the stuffy, like, come on, get off of that. There it is. That. And bit, bit, bit. Now that knot's on the inside, so we can pull this bit tight chop it, and then fluff it out a little bit, and that end gets pulled right back into the inside of the stuffy. And you'll never see it. Fingers crossed. 
Except for the time when, in another three or four years or whatever like that, uh, I have to repair this thing again. I believe that. Francine says, uh, combing a toy's crotch is weird. Yes, Francine, you are right. You know, I never thought I would ever hear a statement like that. But then again, we never thought we would hear of Sparrow Nest Drink. Okay, so... <laughs> so, in America, there is a store called Costco, which is like a big warehouse store where you can go and buy large amounts of things. You buy stuff in bulk there. That's the whole deal for it. And we went there today, Jazzy and I, to, to buy things for the upcoming Ignite conference, which I talked about on Sunday Tea, and with and of which you guys will have a bunch of live streams. Yay! But we went there to buy stuff for that, and so we were over in the drinks area. You can get, you know, like the 24, 36, etc. packs of drinks. And we came across this one drink that was over, like, way on the end cap of a bunch of those, like, you know, the, the Starbucks drinks and the like, uh, fruit energy drinks. And then way over here was this thing. And it said, and I wish that I... I wish that I could, uh, make this up. It said... S what was it? Swallow Swallows Go Nest... Golden Swallows... Go it, it was Golden Nest Swallows Nest Drink. Drink. Yes, yes, that was it. So first of all, what the fuck... It, so we were confused as all hell. What is this? Yeah. Is it a fruit that we don't know about? Yeah, because like the, the front of it showed this sort of like vaguely fruit-shaped object with like some stuff coming off of it, and it was like, it, all it right. very magical, very... Um, very foo-foo, yeah. like Chinese medicine type stuff. And we were like, all right, very interesting. What is this thing? It was eight bottles for $20. So Which right is away, way too many dollars. yeah, right away you know that it's definitely some foo foo, like pseudoscience BS. But it gets better. It gets better. So we were looking at this thing like, what on earth is this thing? And so Jazzy Googled it and found a YouTube video <laughs> that was like uh, about this thing. And we're like, all right, let's watch this video, see what's up with it. It was a guy in Costco doing exactly what we were doing and being like, what is this thing? And he was like, please like comment and tell us if you know what this is and if you've had it and if it's okay and all of that. Yeah, he was like, I want to buy this as like a, a gift for a friend, but I don't know if it's actually like edible. But it's like, wait, if you don't know what it is, why would you buy it as a gift for somebody? Yeah, obviously he's doing it as like a joke or something, huh. but it was like, oh, okay, you aren't helpful at all. So we were looking at it. I picked the thing up and I looked at the ingredient list and I swear to God, this is the ingredient list. It said, purified water, sugar, swallow's nest, and stabilizer. What? The that fuck is a swallow's nest? It cannot possibly be the actual nest of an actual swallow, could it? But well. It, oh yes. Oh yes, it could. As it turns out, that is exactly what it was. We did some some more Google research on it. We went to the company's website, and like we were dying the whole time that we were there. Like this is not real. This cannot be a thing. We got to the company's website and it was like, you know, oh, the, the swallow's nest has been used in, you know, Chinese cooking and medicine for like thousands of years, etc., etc. And it got down to the bottom of it and it's like, we use actual real swallow's nest because the, 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 the proteins in the saliva of the bird. And as soon as the word saliva <laughs> came up, we were just like, no, no, thank you. We are absolutely done with this. Absolutely not. No, thank you. Please do not try to sell me bottles of bird spit. <laughs> I, I was lovingly calling it bird bark, and I think that murdered you in the <laughs> store. We were dying of laughter in the middle of Costco. For and like four in, solid and minutes. Everybody walking by us was looking at us like we were nuts. But what in the world is this drink? And... What? So. Oh wait, but again, we we you forgot to tell them about how we watched the video of somebody pouring it into a oh, cup. Oh, it was so gross. Okay. Oh. Oh man. So we watched another video. The guy had a bottle of it and a glass, and he pop he popped open the bottle and he poured it into the glass, and it's this like viscous, 
like syrupy junk and it had little flecks of stuff oh, in it oh, and it, it just was, looked it revolting bad. when we were I was just uh, uh, uh. Uh. it's like I'm going to puke if oh. you'll excuse me oh it was the worst and people buy there are two people there there are two subsections of human being that will buy this thing and i will tell you exactly what both of them are the first one is like old chinese women who actually know what the thing is and actually like have eaten it eaten slash drank it before and like there that's fine that's whatever it's a cultural thing the second people that will buy this thing are like shitty hipster white guys with like bad, like, beards with handlebar mustaches that don't match, you know exactly who I'm talking about. That kind of person. They are the target audience for this terrifyingly disgusting-looking fucking bird spit drink. <laughs> so, the, the, the end of that story is absolutely not, no thank you, I do not want to play this game. We did not buy it, we were not adventurous enough, plus definitely not spending 20 bucks on some, like, globby, just terrible sounding thing. Well, it, like, it definitely looked like a bodily fluid that was not spit. Yeah. Like, this is the kind of thing where like, you'd, like, cut a bird open and, like, <laughs> squeeze it into a... F we thought initially that we were going to open the bottle and it would just have a dead bird in it. Like, just thump, boom, dead bird. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them, though. Yeah, but, like, how, how could that get past the, the Food and Drug Administration in Japan? Sh or in America, rather. Surely there would be no way that they would yeah. be able to sell that stuff at a Costco. But who knows, man? I mean, that stuff is real. We saw it. It is actually there. We might have to buy some and do a video of it. Uh... Francine says, yeah, she'll do a video about it. But, like, I think what we need to do is, like, we're going up to Ignite Conference where all the hippies are. And I was saying, let's buy it and take it up there and, like, give it to the hippies and tell them that it's, like, you know, some sort of spiritual fucking health drink or some mumbo jumbo like that, yep. and they will definitely be down for drinking it. Yep. And then afterwards, we'll tell them, "Oh yeah, that's just concentrated bird spit," and see what they do, and be like, "Yeah, how does pseudoscience feel now?" Oh god, it just—it looked so gross. It was the worst. <laughs> the things that people decide that are okay to eat. And I mean, like, yeah, obviously there's going to be instances where it's like, well, who thought about eating an egg for the first time? Yeah, that's gross or whatever. But, like, this has taken it too far. Too far. Too far. Okay, Francine, at least, like, the testicles of an animal are still part of that animal's, like, body. And not just the random, like, nest that they found. That they were like, this is probably okay to dissolve into a liquid and drink. I'm totally okay with this idea. I'm on board. Oh, I love humans. I don't. They're all gross. We are a weird species. Humans are gross, and I don't like them. Present company excluded. Ah. Uh. What if it was piss? Like, it, for all we know, it may have been. Well, like, it's probably like all of the things that a nest would have been. So there's probably yeah, bird a little piss. bit of piss, a little bit of a little bit of bird shit, you know, whatever excrements that they produce. What? No. Bird juice. <laughs> ah, wrong. Oh man. Well, I love you all, but I have to leave to go to work. Yeah, I feel you. I need to finish this thing up and head out real soon as well. But once this is finished, everything will be solid and set for it. And I won't have to fix it again for a while, I hope. Austin says, now I'm imagining a full line of products, all nest-based. <laughs> Try our steak nest cult. Oh my gosh, but in the book I'm reading right now, the old Chinese, this is this is set in the, in the 1940s. So um, they have like all these um, Chinese guys that go into a little... Um, like house and they serve noodles and soup you know done that's fine sure sure and um i guess they wrangle all these snakes and get them to pee in in the 
containers, and then the guy brings out the, you know... the Container of the snake pee? Yeah, and he just dips a ladle, and, like, like all these crazy old guys, like, want this snake piss, because apparently it's, you know, medicinal and helps with their... With their manhood. Okay, but secondary question, who fucking thought of that first? Somebody who decided that it would be okay to drink snake piss and that it would maybe make you have a better boner. Because guys will do anything to have a good boner. To be fair, a lot of ladies will do anything to have a good boner as well. I mean... <laughs> this is a weird conversation now. <laughs> Sure hope that there aren't any underage people here. Oh, Lord, help <laughs> us. Uh, Arcane Statics channel gets demonetized and immediately removed from YouTube forever. The end. Womp, womp. Snakes are phallic. I, I mean, yes, yeah, snakes are phallic, but, like, you could make that argument for just, like, you know, tiger's penis. Also very phallic. It is, in fact, a penis. We're definitely getting demonetized. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Okay. So we fixed the arm. We fixed the leg. Are there any other bits on this thing that need fixed? The neck looks like it's been sewn back together a few times. Well, it looks pretty solid, though, now. All right. Well, I deem this surgery a success. Now, if we can only get all the cat hair off of it. The ears both seem to be pretty solidly still on there. It doesn't even seem like they have been repaired at all. So, good, good. seems like that's okay. This definitely feels like a prototype for a Pokemon. Because, <laughs> like, it's, you know, normal thing except for one wacky aspect. Needs a bow tie. Um, you're so right. Needs a bow tie, huh? Think I can pull a bow tie out of, like, a little cleaning cloth? I don't know if I would want to actually attach it because this isn't mine. Yeah, but you could lay a bow tie on. I used to know how to, f like, origami fold one, but uh, I don't think you could origami a, a piece of... Lens cloth. Whatever, we're done. <laughs> Alright, we're done with the thing. Let's take the needle and put it back in the pin cushion because that's where they belong. Okay. Et voila! What do you think, Ed? Ed is disappointed. <laughs> All right, well, so uh, it was a weird stream, but thank you for joining me for it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, look for more streams of, like, fire dancing and other kind of junk like that in the near future, especially since tomorrow and the evening we are going to be heading out to Ignite Conference, where I will be helping the setup and build and all of that for the thing. So... That'll be all of it. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, the like and subscribe buttons are waiting down below the video. You know how to do all of those things already, or at least you should. This is YouTube, whatever. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and do all that stuff. Look out for more things in the near future, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! <laughs>